Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to this talk. My name is Jake Orlowitz. I'm user Okasi. I want to uh, give a quick introduction to the main speaker, uh, Maximilian Dorr, user CyberPower678. I was working at the foundation in 2015, and I came across this post on the blog request uh, board on English Wikipedia where someone says, you know, it'd be really cool if we archived links automatically. And uh, I saw that uh, CyberPower uh, said basically, oh yeah, uh, I do that, or I can do that, or I have done that. And I thought, I need to talk to this person. I'm at the Wikipedia library. We care about reliability and verifiability. And you know it's not verifiable, a dead link. Um, you have no idea what it said. You can't, it doesn't serve the reader. It doesn't serve the editor. It's basically a, a black hole for information. And so I reached out to, to Max and I said, can we meet? And he said, I've never talked to another Wikipedian before. And I said, well, well, you're about to. And we had a video call. And I thought, this this guy is perfect. He doesn't know how good he is. He doesn't know how powerful his code is. He doesn't know how deep this problem is. And then I connected him with another friend at the Internet Archive. You may have heard of the Wayback Machine, run by Mark Graham. And within two years, Mark Graham and Max were working uh, in collaboration, and we are still at it today. I am the Wikipedia liaison, uh, among other roles, for the Internet Archive, and Max is the lead developer of IABot. And that is my introduction for our talk today, 10 years and 20 million links fixed. Thank you. So what Jake said is right. I basically am pretty much socially secluded. I have never talked to another Wikipedian before I met him. Um, the bot project itself started um, in 2015 when I was um, I was just looking at some bot requests because I was kind of bored one day. And I just thought, hey, this looks like an interesting and probably useful challenge. So I took it up and I just started writing some code. And I ran it through approvals, and it initially only handled URLs that were explicitly tagged with a dead link, but that obviously wasn't enough because we needed to be able to detect them at the time. So it was kind of a bit of a process. Um, and just to, to talk about what the problems of link rot generally are, um, is that, as Jake may, may, may mentioned it a moment ago, is that we have websites that are just going down all the time, and a lot of links on Wikipedia are, use URLs to back up the content that are on their pages. And you can't really b verify them if they're dead, because they've either moved or they are no longer maintained, somebody's purchased them or usurped them, or they just have ongoing technical failures. Um, and then we also have a variation of link rot, which I call, or we call content drift, where the website is still there, but the content has changed so significantly, it doesn't really truly back up what was originally posted on Wikipedia. Um, and that's just one of the core principles of Wikipedia, is just to be able to verify what's there. Um, and so I, I, I knew that, that that was kind of a problem at the beginning, so I took on this chat task back in the bot request, and then Jake recruited me, and he asked me, he's like, hey, can you actually make this run on more wikis? And I was just like, hmm. I initially coded the bot to explicitly only run on the English Wikipedia, because that was the Wikipedia I usually worked on. That was my home wiki. And I thought, sure, I'll give it a try. If, how many, like, can you do it on the Swedish Wikipedia? It's like the second largest Wikipedia at the time. And so I coded it for the Swedish Wikipedia. And then my next job was to, how hard would it be to deploy to all the other Wikipedias? And I'm just like, yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So it took some time, um, but we are scaled to almost every Wikipedia language out there. Um, and so the program back then was called No More 404s. We've since renamed it to TARB turn all references blue. So it opens the scope up to beyond just fixing dead links. We're trying to add links everywhere that makes the information more easily accessible to people. Um, and so Internet Archive Bot, as many of you may know, is it just automates this process of repairing that, those broken links on Wikipedia so users just don't have to do that. And so we've hit a milestone which is why this presentation was founded in the first place. As of February 12th, 2024, we've rescued 20 million links on every language Wikipedia we're running on right now. And actually, as a matter of fact, <laughs> a 
as of today, we're actually at 21 and a half million. And I also lied a little bit. It's not been 10 years either, so we're actually at nine years. So next year, we might actually have a bigger milestone to actually truly report. So how does the bot generally work right now? It goes through every page on Wikipedia, on every Wikipedia. Um, it runs through the pages alphabetically or however the API is returning them. And it will look at the wiki text and it will extract every reference it finds, every citation it finds or template it finds, and any free form, just plainly pasted URLs it can find. And it will scan them to just test if they're dead or not. And it does this with a waiting period. So URLs that are on trending dead will have a waiting period of three days. So if the link hasn't been checked within that time, it will be checked. URLs that have been tested to be alive have the waiting period of seven days. They don't need to be tested as often. So if, like I said, if it's outside that waiting period, it will check it. Um, and if we have a failed check, three consecutive checks, iBot will then officially declare the link dead and then proceed to rescue it. Users, on, users using the bot can also manually override the bot by just updating the URL metadata using the website at iabot.wmcloud.org. Um, but most of the time, there's no need. Um, but the, so some cases, such as geo restrictions or just soft 404s, are still a reason why we'd need to manually tell the bot, hey, this like link is dead. So that option exists to helping improve it. But moving on, then the next step is after the links have been scanned or assessed, um, it will proceed to query the Wayback Machine for a copy of those links if they're dead. And optionally, if the links are alive, it can be submitted to the Wayback Machine by the bot. And on Wikipedia, iBot doesn't actually do this at the moment because there's another separate process running at, uh, over on the Wayback Machine side, which is actively looking for new links in real time and just submitting them automatically. So in theory, when users add a link, it should almost immediately be visible on the Wayback Machine at the time the link was added. Um, after we've uh, done all of our work, we've added the archives where we needed to. We just apply those changes to the page, and then the bot does some basic cleanup on the wiki text, such as deduplicating references in places so we don't have redundant references plastered throughout the uh, wiki text. And that isn't, hasn't been without problems, however. I just mentioned deduplicating references, but iBot tends to have a problem with some of its wiki syntax handling. References can be a complicated endeavor in many cases. And so I've been grinding away at uh, a new version of iBot, um, which is also why sometimes I'm a little radio silent on the Wikipedia itself. Um, I'm just, just focused on it. And one of the new things I'm working on is completely reworking how the bot is parsing the page with a new internal parser. Um, the current one is much of a rat's nest. Um, it's not fun to maintain or even you know look at. Um, so I kind of want other maintainers to uh, kind of want to help when they, if they want to and not be like driven away wanting to gouge their eyes out. So, <laughs> 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 um, so yes, I'm reworking the uh, parser. And then one of the reworks I'm doing is also I want to make the parser available via an API so other automated processes can make use of this parser. Um, iBot does a generally good job of extracting data. Um, and one of the, its core features is being able to automatically adapt to changing citation templates. Uh, a few years ago, we changed dead URL to URL status. And that was one of the things iBot was automatically able to pick up on and change on its own, um, just because of uh, the adaptive citation engine I put into it. Um, and I want to just let other users be able to take advantage of, the, of that and just pull that so they don't have to re-engineer the wheel if something already exists for, as a solution. Um, one of the other problems is that I've encountered is that um, the bot caches only one archive URL for every URL it's found on Wikipedia. And while in many cases that's fine, and in a lot of other cases it's not. And that's because sometimes there are different pages citing different versions of the same URL with different content on it. So we need different snapshots. Uh, of, with different timestamps. Um, so I'm actually taking this one step farther. The bot can only query the Wayback Machine for URLs. This new version will be able to query the other 20 providers it knows of for URLs. Um, 
So it's going to be no longer confined to a single URL. It'll have an index of multiple URLs from multiple providers, which as, as current count is at least 20 of them it supports. Um, and then just some other improvements to the hardware utilization. While we are scaled to 300 plus wikis, um, there are in a, there are just there's performance being left on the table. The hardware utilization is sometimes under half of what of the hardware allows. So it's not it, there's you can definitely speed things along. Ian Wiki takes about three months to process for Internet Archive Pod. It's a little too slow. Um, so we want to speed that up by just enhancing uh, how fast it runs by just adding more parallelization to it. And like I said, um, that there's some other optimizations being introduced. I'm adding more security by switching it to OAuth 2, which will further uh, add more options like users being able to integrate IABot and have it interact with the REST, Wiki-based REST API. So better Wiki data support in that sense. And just some other things. And then I also have some other features that I'm further down the pipeline that I want to work on. And for one, iBot is written in PHP, not the best language for a application that needs to scale like this. Uh, I want to rewrite it into Go, which offers compilability. So users that want to actually run the bot can actually just run it by executing a single binary instead of deploying this, which is not the most straightforward thing to do. And I also want to rewrite the web interface. Um, I initially wrote it to try and make it user and, uh, friendly. Um, he told me I failed miserably at that. <laughs> I'm not a tech guy, so. So yeah, we need to rewrite the user interface again. Um, so that's going to happen down the road as well. And one of the biggest updates I want to do is change the workflow of the bot. And what Instead of iterating through each article like it does right now and what it's going to do in the future version, I want to actually have it just trawl through recent changes instead and just work on articles the moment they may have edits made to it. And what, what with the links that go down in the meantime, a background process will just be checking all the links that it's already indexed from previous uh, scans. So it, the bot will just directly target any page that has had a link go down on it, and it should be near instant. Um, in terms of links going down, as long as uh, once the waiting period has elapsed, the bot will Im just immediately target those pages. It's <laughs> supposed to be nice. So overall, um, we've like 20 million links is impressive, honestly. So, <laughs> <laughs> and imagine if the bot didn't exist today and nobody's written a solution for it. Like, uh, where would the reliability be? So we've, we're, we're maintaining the reliability. We're, in, we're maintaining the verifiability. We're enhancing it in that sense. And then the readers that are reading our pages can actually go to those pages. So we're enhancing our user trust in Wikipedia just because the references we're referencing are actually accessible still. And so, yeah, so to conclude, well, the TAR program, like I said, is also working on other things, um, but the, just outside the scope of iBot because we want to add links everywhere. But in short, we've, we've done a huge accomplishment. I just want to toot my own horn on that one. Um, and I'm working on further enhancements to make it do its job better. And I'm looking forward to any questions or any feature requests you guys might have of me in the process. One sec on questions. I just want to mention that uh, it is not trivial or uh, should not go without mention that it is the Internet Archive that has funded this effort. Um, that is their specialty. It is a sign that our movement does not function alone. Um, the foundation is great at some things, and the Internet Archive is the best archive in the world for digital assets. And Mark Graham has been a huge supporter, a very selfless supporter of this effort. He employs, I think, four to six people on just this project. So, um, you know, kudos to the Internet Archive. Thank you to Mark Graham. Uh, it's his vision that this is necessary that uh, brought us on and funds our efforts. So we'll take questions, and um, I'll call out, but technical questions will go to Max. First, uh, wait for a microphone, please. And I'll move around the room. Thanks for the presentation. So two questions about Wikidata. The first one is, I know, as you said, that um, 
Internet Archive preemptively archives the links uh, that are in the Wikipedia pages. And uh, if you know if it does it also for the links in the Wikidata items. The second one is about if your bot also runs on Wikidata uh, or if you plan to do it in the future. Thanks. Okay, so, I'm sorry. So for the uh, preactively archiving uh, links on Wikidata, um, I know it does that for Wikipedia, but I think because of the structure of Wikidata, I don't think it does that. There aren't, are, it might. Actually, no, I think it might. It's, it's we'll, we'll get you an answer. We'll get you an answer on that one. As for the bot running on Wikidata, it does, but it's in a very limited state. It's not as be good as it can be, and I wanted to make that better, so. Uh, hi, thank you for the lecture. Uh, I, I'm not actually having a question, it's more like a comment slash conclusion. Uh, because uh, at the end of your lecture you said, uh, uh, what, what, if the, uh, what if the bot uh, wouldn't exist right now? Mm -hmm. what, like, uh, imagine for a second that, that, that th this bot doesn't exist, what would, you, what would we do? Um, in our local Polish uh, community uh, meetings I always encourage, when you uh, actually source, uh, give a source from, the, uh, from a web, uh, website like uh, links, uh, please uh, always uh, archive with uh, Internet Archive or, or any other page, uh, Archive Today, for example, uh, and uh, include this into your site uh, template. It will be much easier in the future, so the the, the links would wouldn't be dead. So and the, and the credi credibility of the Wikipedia wouldn't fall fall down. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you for that comment. I just want to point out that it's entirely technically possible for Cytoid to add an archive link at the point of the uh, reference being added. There's, this is a, that is not, I mean, there is a technical challenge to make it fast enough, but what we really face with what's called born archived links, because basically uh, IABot fixes links after they're dead. You can archive links at the moment they're born. This is a different model. French uses it with WikiWix, um, and it, it is an inspiring model, but uh, it's a, it's a community problem because it clutters the interface. And a lot of editors don't want extra icons, links, JavaScript on the article page. So this is a multifaceted problem. It's not just technical. It's also about uh, individual user preference around the readability of uh, markup and wiki source. And it's also about you know, questions about sh is JavaScript okay or not. Um, but what's hopeful is that IABot 3.0, which is the future version, can work so quickly that it's effectively born, it's as good as born archived, but it doesn't clutter the page. It only works when the link goes dead, but it's instantaneous. Does that cover it? Yeah. I also want to add something. Um, there's also, I also support preemptive archiving as well. And we do that on a few wikis, uh, Russian Wikipedia and uh, Chinese Wikipedia are two to name. Um, and one of the problems, there are problems with that too, and that's when you hit large articles and then you suddenly add 300 archive URLs to uh, citation templates. Um, we've ran into issues where uh, the media wiki parser just you know, threw up on the page. <laughs> So um, yeah, it became too large for its own good. So there's a that, that's the next problem of that. So there's not really a good solution. And then some people turn off JavaScript. So if you were t adopting the WikiWix model and they had JavaScript turned off, then boom, the archives don't show up anymore because Wiki their WikiWix thing is a MediaWiki JS gadget generating those links on demand. Um, so there's there's ups and downs to each problem, and as I mentioned in the future version where I wanted to change the workflow, having the bot you know just kind of step in when the link is dead quick more quickly seems to be kind of like the most ideal in the middle approach for that. The nice thing about the interface that I can't understand is that it's incredibly configurable. One of the things that Max has done brilliantly is add customization options for every single possible thing. So uh, wikis can 
adapt this to their own uh, needs and use cases and configure it. I mean, configuration is essential. This is not a monolithic piece of software. Uh, that's why the interface is complex on the web interface, but it also means that with a little bit of training, uh, you can make it work just the way you want on your wiki. You can have it ar archive everything automatically. Uh, it just has trade-offs. Um, hands again. Um, him, him. Oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, okay, okay. First of all, good, kudos to okay. you, uh, amazing work. Small question, um, do you have any thoughts about dead links on Wikimedia Commons? I'm very much in support of deploying to Commons, but there are some technical problems that's inhibiting me right now. What? I think we shut off because it was causing problems for embedded images. Just like the goal was to go from one to two to 300 wikis, the goal is to go to every Wikimedia project and maybe even beyond Wikimedia projects. So uh, we're working on it. We're just prioritizing you know, uh, places where references are, I'm just going to say this, plenty. Most, in, most essential. And they're absolutely essential on Wikipedias. They're uh, incredibly important on Wikidata. They're less common, if you will, on commons, but they are still important, but we're getting there. Yeah, I stress that, uh, that Internet Archive Bot is written on a single code base for every wiki, so it's the same code running on every wiki. It's not, it's not branched or var variated or any, in any way. It's just one code. So Wikitex parsing is hard. Uh, have you considered outsourcing it, like something like Parsoid or one of the other services uh, we have? So I make the sysadmins, uh, Parsoid runs through an API, right? I make the sysadmins already mad enough at me as it is. Um, um, they instituted a global rate limit that the bot just barely manages to keep under. And I'm not talking about a per wiki limit. I'm hitting the global web service rate limit. Um, so I had to introduce a huge optimization not too long ago to try and get the bot under there while keeping its uh, speed up. And I pulled it off, but you know, I, if I added more requests out to a service, I fear, fear um, I'm going to get yelled by the sysadmins again. For instance, uh, or something like that? I have, I have thought about using Parsoid, um, but I haven't made any conclusion if I want to do it yet. Just, just a comment because uh, your, your bot is running uh, really, really a great job, and I'm running also a bot for the um, dead links on the Polish Wikipedia. The difference is I'm, I'm, I'm only marking them on the discussion pages. Why? Because there are two problems that I've, that we found out. One is that sometimes the archive leak, in, even in an uh, internet archive, they are there, but they. Uh, they do not have content. So it says everything is OK. You open the, the archive link, and it says, well, but this page doesn't exist. Uh, and, and it was archived because every error code is OK, everything is OK, but there is no content. So I leave it to, to, to people to verify. And the second thing is, other way around, uh, um, there are quite a lot of false positives because a lot of pages does not allow bots, or, or especially when you ask them a few times in a, in a moment, you get locked out of the of the site, or you are you're getting crappy answer, and and th there is a false positive. So uh, that the, for example, that's why I'm I, I don't want to edit the pages itself. It just puts a template in the in a in a uh, discussion page for people for the users to verify, and then well notify it, and make me maybe an exception and so on. Uh, but I saw that your bot is really good at at, at uh, battling that. So. Great job. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the f options for Internet Archive. But you can instead have it post to talk pages for user review instead, and it's especially useful if it does have those problems. And while the bot does a fairly good job of figuring out if it just got blocked due to a rate limit or something like that, or bot blocked, it absolutely stinks at detecting geo restricted sites, which tend to happen in Poland and other European or Asian based uh, locations. Um, and that's that's one of the that's why I'm adding more URL state distinctions, such as being able to flag domains as geo restricted on the bot, so it knows it knows better than to try and assess it. It will just simply go defer to user judgment instead, or um, 
down the road if I manage to implement a VPN solution where I can route my requests to those geo, uh, for those geo-restricted sites to a proper location to get a response to actually make the bot more reliable in that sense. But um, I haven't uh, explored the VPN solution just yet. Um, we're at time, but we'll be in the hallway for questions if you want to talk more. I don't want to take time from the next speaker, but thank you everyone for coming and a huge